Hello. Welcome back to the shed. And welcome back to the first video you have ever seen where I haven't had a hat on. And what I thought I'd do in this video is, well, not another pandemic project. Yes, they are going to carry on. I've got a few more lined up in the pipeline. But in this one, I just thought I'd do a little bit of an update on, well, stuff I've been up to and a couple of ideas I've had. So my first little update, um, and if you follow me on Instagram, you may already have had the heads up on this, is I've been doing a little bit of work in Greencraft HQ, i.e. my shed, uh, and I've put in a, a clean area, uh, an area that I can use for sewing, so if I'm making my pouches and stuff up, if I'm making up bits of clothing, it's a dedicated area. Yes, my, my workbench is great, but it's also filthy, it's covered in crap. Uh, I wouldn't want to put nice clean fabrics on there. So I've made myself a, a little folding work table that fits in underneath the window. Uh, and when I need it, it lifts out. I can put all my stuff on it. I've got a nice clean area to work with. It's making stuff or packaging stuff up uh, to send out all, all my Etsy orders. Um, and then when I, I finish with it, I could just fold it all away. So it's, it's great. And that's, that's a little project that I've been getting on with. Now, as well as uh, working on my, my workbench, I've also been thinking about some of the, the kit that I use, that I make, and that I sell. Uh, and in particular, my, my little pouches that I sell up on, on my Etsy shop. And I had a little bit of a, a thought, I've had this sort of conundrum going on for a bit of a while, which is, when I'm out in the woods, I prefer to use a set of loose fitting trousers with braces rather than a belt and my main thinking if you if you looked at my videos before um, is that I don't start off the day with loads of stuff in my trousers but through the course of the day when I'm out and about stuff gets put in my trousers whether it's stuff that I forage whether it's hats gloves all sorts of, of paraphernalia and it weighs my trousers down which if I've got a belt on means I spend half my time trying to pull my trousers up so I went over to braces. The problem is I also like having my stuff organized, which is why I like belt pouches that will keep my EDC knife, my ferro rod, my torch in one place. It will keep my uh, little bit of duck, uh, gorilla tape and a tampon also tucked away off to one side. And the problem with that is, well, I need to wear a belt. Or does it? Because that started me thinking years ago when I bought my first Mora knife. Well, I thought I bought a duff one because actually the, the belt loop seemed a bit strange. It only had just the, the one slot in it. And then I looked into it a bit further and it's because they do, because they attach stuff with a button. And then I thought, hang on, my braces are attached to my trousers by buttons. So what I came up with is this. So now, if you are ordering any of my little pouches off of my Etsy shop, there is also an option to add one of those little loops onto your pouch. It costs a quid, which is nothing much. It gives you the versatility of switching between a belt loop or a button. So you can attach your pouch anywhere you like. Now obviously at the moment the whole world has been affected by this COVID-19 thing. Um, we in the UK are under this lockdown thing and I started to see quite a bit of negativity about it. You know, no one particularly likes being restricted in any way. You know, we can't get out to the woods, you can't do the things that you want to do. And understandably, a lot of folks are quite unhappy about this. And I sat down and I thought about it and I thought, well actually, if you look at it, it's not a negative thing. In some ways, if you look at it in the right way, it's an opportunity. 
it's a time where we can actually learn new things. We can also experience new things. And the big one of those is you can actually get to know your local area. Now, if we follow current government guidelines in the UK, at least, then there's only certain times we can go outside of our, our home. And that's for medical reasons, or to buy food, or for exercise. And that is limited to one hour per day. So what I thought was, well, actually, how far can I travel in one hour? Obviously, I've got to be able to get there and back. So it's actually, effectively, how far can I travel in 30 minutes? So I went out and had a little try and I walked 30 minutes from home and 30 minutes back. And then when I got home, got one of these, an ordnance survey map. And I put the center point where I live. I then marked where I'd got to, I then drew a circle all the way around, a radius from my home, 30 minutes. And actually, there's quite a bit of ground in that space. So this got me thinking about an exercise I used to do with students years ago. I give them a peg and I give them three meters of paracord. They would push the peg in by their feet they would then take their length of paracord, tie a little loop in the end, slip it over the peg, and they would then walk a radius, a three meter radius from that peg. And then within that area, they had to identify everything that was in any way useful to them. And I thought, hang on a minute, why can't we do the same thing now under our COVID-19 lockdown restrictions? But instead of it being a a three meter length of paracord is a 30, meet, uh, 30 minute walk from your home location. Now, if you carry that exercise out on a map, if you mark where you live, work out how far out you can walk in 30 minutes in a relatively straight line and then draw a 30 meter radius round from your home location, actually, that covers a huge amount of ground. And within that radius, that 30 minutes walk of where I live, what am I actually gonna learn? Well, I might learn a bit about my neighbors. Who else lives around me? What are the public rights away? Are there quicker ways to get from A to B? Because normally I'm in a car and you don't see things when you're in a car, but when you're on foot, it's completely different. You see a whole different world. You might also get to learn a little bit about the flora and fauna around your area and I think that's a really good thing to learn. Yeah that's right, foraging. Now when I teach people about foraging I teach them well actually it's not just about plants and stuff you can eat. You can forage a whole world of different resources whether it's types of sticks for different projects, whether it's fungi, crambles and fire lighting, fungi to eat whether it's different types of plant, perhaps not for food, perhaps for fibres for making cordage. So there's a whole world of different stuff out there we can forage. Now the thing with foraging is it tends to be quite opportunistic, i.e. some days you don't see anything on a particular route, other days you might find loads of stuff. Now normally when we think of foragers, they normally have several things. And one of those is a big basket. But can you really be asked to carry one of these everywhere you go? And the simple answer is no. You don't want to be carrying a great big basket like that. You want to just stick your gear on in the morning, go out for a walk. And if you come across something, then have the facility to be able to gather it. Now, for the eagle-eyed among you, you will have noticed when I showed you my belt pouches, as well as my EDC light pouch and my little companion pouch, there was another pouch and it's this. And this is my opportunist pouch. It's not 
a new idea. It's something that's been around for a long time. They usually call them forager pouches and they're usually made from a bit of leather with a nice canvas bag that drops out. And they're quite bulky and you have to remember to put them on your back belt before you go out. This version, however, and I'm going to do a how to make one of these as well as put them up on my, my Etsy shop for sale, is smaller and way more lightweight. All we do to deploy it is undo the popper and open the super lightweight bag. So as you can see, this is a small, lightweight parachute nylon bag. It doesn't weigh anything and it rolls down really, really small into the little carrier on your belt. Indeed, if you're wearing a shirt or even just a t-shirt, it doesn't notice. It's not like you're going out with the, the whole utility belt on, which kind of gives the game away that you're, you're out collecting stuff. This is designed so you can carry it everywhere and no one will notice you're carrying it and you can take advantage of those opportunities as you come along. You don't even think you're carrying it until that opportunity comes up. And when it does, that's there nice and ready. So how are you going to know what to put in your little opportunist pouch? Well, what I'm going to do is over the next few days, weeks, however long this takes, when I'm out on my little bit of exercise, if I see anything that I think you might find useful, I'm going to film it, pick it, bring it back, show you how you can use it. It might be as a resource, something you can make, but it might also be as a food. Now, obviously I live in South East England, which <clears throat> you may not, but what I'll try to do is go for things that I know are fairly common in the temperate zone as a whole. I know when I've been in Austria and Spain and France and Italy, etc., I see quite a few plants that I recognize from back home. So I'll try to include those wherever I can. If I can also, I will include recipes for how you can use these plants because these wild plants nutritionally are way better for us than their cultivated counterparts. You get a lot more nutrients and ingredients and stuff in there that are better for us than we do in the stuff you buy at the supermarket. So I'll try to include different ways that you can consume it. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. I hope it's inspired you maybe to take a look at some of the other videos that I'm gonna be putting up. As I said, the, the little opportunist pouch um, I will be putting up onto my Etsy shop, but also uh, under my pandemic projects heading, um, I will do you a little how to. So that if you want to make one, if you've got access to a sewing machine, you can have a go at making your own one too, and they are pretty easy to do. As I said, you can always support the channel by going over to my, my Etsy shop, having a look. You can also follow me on Instagram. I am greencraft underscore zero one. Or over on Facebook, just search for Greencraft. And I post quite a bit. You can see different stuff that I'm up to. You can also, if you want to get involved with the channel, and I recognise things are tough at the, at the moment, um, but if you want to, pop over to my Patreon page and you can see how you can support the channel over there doesn't cost a huge amount and <clears throat> it will definitely be helping the channel out and helping in the development of the channel as well. I think that's everything. Um, if you like this video then obviously hit that like button and if you haven't already subscribe. And until next time, I've been Neil. Stay safe.